Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Hello, and welcome back to the Cube this afternoon here in Amsterdam from KubeCon and Cloud Native Con. I want to thank you for joining us. We have an exciting 4:30 in the afternoon, bring in the cupcake <laughs> energy type of interview going on. I'm Rob Streche, and I'm here with Joe, and we have two fantastic uh, Red Hatters with us, uh, Christian and uh, Harriet. So nice to meet you, and thank you for coming on board. Uh, thank you. Thanks. What, what's been the most exciting thing you guys have seen? I mean, I, I saw that it was packed. You were saying when we were catching up earlier that when you had the hats, the fedoras, <laughs> uh, I should say fedoras and not hats. Yeah. We had one here and it magically disappeared. Yes. Somebody must have <laughs> co-opted it. They tend to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they co opted it. You have to hold on to them when you get them. I know, <laughs> I know. They're the valuable commodity. Limited. You said it was yeah. completely <laughs> packed. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the conversations that you're both having with these customers who are coming by? Um, you know? Yeah, everyone wants to talk about GitOps, yeah. um, which is really exciting. I think it's a wonderful technology, and uh, I'm so glad that so many people are interested in it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, and getting, um, you know, o over the years, getting uh, people coming by the booth, uh, the questions, they're getting more and more advanced. So, you know, kind of speaks to a little bit about the evolution of the technology. So it's very, um, it, it was very great to be, to be able to talk a, a, a little bit more advanced topics now, now that it's been around for a little bit. So, so, so help me out, what is, what, where was it and where did it go to? Because what's, what makes it more advanced, the discussions that you're having with them? Yeah, I think uh, the adoption is growing. So before it, it was a, a buzzword, right? It was buzzwordy, right? Yeah. It, it on purpose, right? It's kind of earwormy. Get ops, like what is that? Um, but as uh, as folks are starting to adopt it and are starting to actually putting in production, um, that the the situations and the questions are starting to get a little bit more advanced. And so what's interesting to me is back in the day we used to focus on the technology aspect of this. So we we would ask questions like, what is Git ops? What products do I use? How do I install them? The questions I've been seeing is, so we've got GitOps now, how do I make my company successful with it? And so instead of focusing on the technical solutions, we're looking at the organizational problems. Mm -hmm. And that makes me wonder, what are those organizational problems that we solve by using GitOps? Yeah, absolutely, and this is something that our customers are coming to us with all the time. Um, especially now that, like Christian said, GitOps has been around for a while, it's matured enough that the larger organizations are interested and they're at the point where um, they feel comfortable adopting it. So they've got problems like, all right, we've got all these, we've got thousands of edge devices. How do we start deploying out to those? And um, we've got all of these different teams. How do we do multi-tenancy? Like, how do we make our access control work for us with GitOps? So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think we've been hearing it as well, and I think that uh, as Kubernetes. I mean, we're you know almost ten, what ten years in now, wow. so it's it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I just that overlap back with OpenStack when I was doing stuff in OpenStack is is kind of a, a funny time because now I, I'm hearing we were on with uh, the Kubevert guys earlier and how some of that is actually part of the stuff that I did when I was back in OpenStack. Uh, so it's it's fun to see how it is. I, what I have seen is that the energy here has just been unbelievable. And I think part of that energy has been the movement from DevOps, SRE, all different groups, all highly fragmented to your organizational. Now it's more platform engineering. Are you seeing GitOps as being kind of the foundation to like platform engineering and how people are looking at that as well? Yeah, or I've, as I've seen it like as a cornerstone, really. Yeah. Uh, GitOps is really, um, I always say it's a cornerstone to a lot of different practices. Um, and o only because it's taking advantage of the technology, you know, the cloud native technology, right? Of, of right. Kubernetes and just like, just in general, cloud native. 
And so the um, it's really like the cornerstone for things like platform engineering. It's kind of like on the tool belt of platform engineering and also things like DevSecOps um, and just DevOps in general, CICD. It's just been really, um, you know, kind of a foundational thing now more than anything. Yeah, but at the same time, if we're talking about GitOps, I mean, the definition evolves and it's, that's, you know, that's a natural state of things. But GitOps is not a single thing. GitOps is not, you know, one piece of technology. So, help the audience kind of understand what GitOps is and by definition, you know, what, what kind of technologies do we need to be successful? Yeah, so um, Red Hat is part of the GitOps working group in the, in the CNCF, right? So a sandbox project, but it's really a, um, uh, I guess a group of SMEs, right? From both, uh, from, from both the Argo world and the Flux world. And also from, from folks like from the Spinnaker um, background mm -hmm. and uh, the Carvel people, just kind of like practitioners that are getting together and uh, trying to define what GitOps is and kind of just like, all right, let's, let's, let's bring all our best practices, all the knowledge that we've known and lessons that we learned and let's define what GitOps is. And that's kind of what one of the things that uh, the GitOps working group, uh, which I'm involved, um, uh, with, which I'm a maintainer of, is that, okay, let's, let's define what GitOps is because um, we, we don't want to turn into something like cloud, right? Like what does cloud mean? It, it could mean anything, right? Nowadays, right? Yeah. It, 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 uh, so we, you know, um, you know, I encourage everyone to go to open, opengitops.dev. We have a set of four principles that kind of just uh, guide you to what like, okay, if I want to do GitOps, what are like kind of the things I need to, kind of the practices that I need to do in order to really take advantage of, of, of the GitOps practices. Yeah, I, I, I think exactly building off uh, what Joe was saying is the fact that people, like the first day on the keynote, I went in there and I started looking at the readouts from this, from mm -hmm. all of the different uh, you know, successes that have been built over in the different, uh, why am I blanking on the name of the things, but <laughs> yeah. you know, different different group working groups that are going about it. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, what I, the one thing that was, I, I guess you could say, very uh, telling to me, and I, and I, I know with your guys' background and how you just described GitOps and that, mm. that I think it, it was one of these, and this is building off of that, is that having just a one minute hey, this is what Flux does, this is what does yeah, Argo uh, does. I think that, you know, that helps bring those new people, because 58% of the people here are new to this, really? right? Wow. I mean, that was mm -hmm. one of the stats that you were saying. If you have 10,000 people and 58%, it's their first KubeCon, uh -huh. it's, it's crazy. I mean, That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's fantastic, and I think that, mm -hmm. that brings the new energy and helps mm -hmm. build Absolutely. that. So what, what is Flux for those at home that don't know what Flux does? Yeah, yeah, so Flux is uh, a GitOps controller, okay. right, that um, continuously um, syncs your desired state, which is Git, to your running state, which is an, in Kubernetes, right? And so uh, Flux does that, Argo, Argo CD does that, which is what, um, what uh, Red Hat is a big contributor to Argo CD yeah. as well. And really any other, uh, other uh, GitOps controller is really just like from, from a baseline, you know, kind of like you were saying, like what's the one sentence? You have a desired state somewhere in Git, usually, and you want that mashed into your running state. Yeah. And so that that is like really the, the ground, you know, like the, the, the main idea of GitOps and, and any tool that, that employs the GitOps principles. And is it looking for drift and things like that? Yeah, and yeah. yeah drift detection, yeah. drift yeah. correction, okay. and Excellent. you know things, things like that. Right? Excellent. So. Yeah, and you get the like self-healing right out of the box, so it doesn't just have to be application deployment, which I feel like a lot of people coming to GitOps, they think it's just CD, it's just yeah. the you're deploying your applications, um, but it's not, it's infrastructure as well and configuration management, so um, you can set your desired state and then you've got your controller that's always polling and checking, like has someone gone into my cluster and made silly mistakes? And it can go and self-heal that for you. So you don't even have to think about it. After you set up your desired state in Git, it's set and forget and it fixes it for you. So I wonder how this works in large organizations. And maybe you can speak to that a little bit because you know, if I'm if I'm a single developer or a small team, this is not a you know, this is not a hard problem to solve. It becomes very, very complex once you start to scale this across the organization. So I wonder what, what are kind of the best practices that you need to implement as a GitOps ready organization to be able to scale it across you know, thousands of developers? I think my favorite topic there, it's always going to be access control. <laughs> so 
So um, when you're looking at, okay, so we've got all these teams, we've, we're taking our first steps into GitOps. Um, how, how do we make it go? How do we scale it up? Um, you can't just kind of launch yourself into that. You've got to like take a look at your organization and be like, all right, what teams do I have? Uh, what are our business needs? What are our regulatory requirements? Like, can we just give everyone access to all this stuff? Is that all right? Um, do we need our teams who deal with billing to be like hived off this side and like no other development teams can push to those clusters? Or you've got to have a really solid understanding of what your business needs and what your threat model is and what your like risk tolerance is before you kind of come in and we can't like say this is how you do it because it's so based on everyone's individual organizational needs. Yeah, but you, and you bring up a good point where your risk tolerance is, I think, a very good way of capturing it because it's not a you know all, all or nothing situation. Yeah, it's always a gray area, especially in larger larger organizations. <laughs> and so, giving people the guardrails of you know this is where we start. It's you know it's guarded heavily. It's a small team. Um, the freedom is you know fairly small. But then as you grow, as you adopt the guardrails come off, basically. <laughs> yeah, and I always say, you know, to kind of to what, what Harriet, to build off what she was saying, I always say that GitOps, GitOps almost like reveals some of the gaps you have in your organization yeah. because you are, you know, uh, when, when I talk to customers, when I talk to people about GitOps, they're like, well, what do you mean it's automatically synced? <laughs> I'm like, and then my first question is like, why does that make you nervous, right? Because it, <laughs> it, it, it you know, if, if you have good practices in place, you know, to, to Harriet's point, um, those those are those aren't aren't as scary, right? If it if it's scary to you, then it's it's more of an organizational people problem, as I, I like to say. It's like okay, like what what's wrong with our structure, and how can we best change in order to implement some of these things? Yeah. Which it, which almost you know I don't want to over exaggerate, but it almost <laughs> goes back to lean practices. Yes. But applied in a very technical sense, mm -hmm. down to earth, mm -hmm. um, in a way that actually makes sense to technologists in that space, in the operational space. Um, and again, I, I think that makes sense because GitOps is not one technology. Um, it is a way to solve your organizational mm -hmm. issues. And I, I think that you're right on the money there. Um, that being said, I think you know, there's a bright future ahead of, uh, of us with GitOps because I think you know, it makes a ton of sense. It solves a lot of operational problems, but we have this AI thing looming over us. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're basically talking about you know, policy as code, compliance as code. We're talking about uh, uh, drift detection and remediation. That is, you know, something we have to do fairly manually right now, defining those policies. Mm -hmm. um, what's your take on AI and kind of taking taking over that manual work? <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, well, for me, I think it's. Um, I think it's a very important step, especially in the sustainability aspect of it. I, I think AI is going to play a big part in the sustainability uh, with respect to to GitOps, right? Because as I was saying, it's like the cornerstone to a lot of these things. It's uh, you know, in being able to automatically shift workloads. But GitOps but is going to be a play, just, play a big just, part there. Just by, by, but when you say sustainability, yeah. you're meaning the sustainability of the infrastructure. Well, I, I mean, I mean, like environmental, environmental, oh, environmental, yeah. Yeah. environmental okay. sustainability is, is what I meant. Okay, no, yeah, great, yeah, yeah th great. thank you. Yeah, um, mm. clarify a little bit is the yeah, environment, environmental yeah. sustainability, be, AI being able to say, oh, it's better to run this workload over here because it's it's better environmentally than like over here, right? Mm. It's it's going to be less. Um, cost is always going to be an aspect of it. It's going to be mm -hmm. less about cost and more about like environmental sustainability. Yeah. And GetOps is going to be a cornerstone of that because um, it, it's, it's going to need to automatically ship those those workloads. And as you were saying, a lot of that stuff is like manual now, and as AI is becoming more and more advanced, mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to do more of these things. Um, and I, I see it in the at least from the environmental sustainability, um, mm -hmm. AI and GetOps is going to play a big role there. And yeah. so this, you know, this all solves a lot of operational toil. Um, <laughs> it, it removes a lot of this manual work. I think that's that's great. Um, but then we have this, you know, this pool of talented people mm -hmm. that have automated away a big part of their job. Which kudos, that's the goal of your job. But what's kind of next for this group? And by extension, what's next for GitOps? What's next for Argo specifically? Oh, that's an exciting question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I don't think. AI is going to take away, like it's never going to take away everything. There, There's always stuff that needs human oversight and human inputs. Like who, who is going to have that business knowledge if not the people who are working there? The AI can't understand that itself. 
Um, so I think the, the folks who have automated away a bunch of their jobs, they, they now have the time to explore um, more into like, okay, so we've got these business needs, how can we meet them more efficiently and how can we meet them better? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that you'd brought up access control earlier <laughs> because I think that's one place where yeah. actually you need more people involved <laughs> Yes, because yeah. of AI and what AI could do and you know, potential leaks or confidentiality or what have yeah. you changing, uh, mm -hmm. that types of stuff. Um, what, el what else do you see on the horizon for this? Is there other stuff that you're looking at and going, hey, these, these are what I want to, you know, we're here next year and sitting here and you hope that, hey, we've, we've gotten through X to get yeah. there. So for me, at least from the GetOps space, I've been working a lot with, um, me specifically with our Ansible team at Red Hat, um, because GetOps has grew, was born and grown in the cloud native space. Um, you know, it, it, you need you know, almost Kubernetes is almost like the default. You have to use it, but a lot of these practices extend beyond just like Kubernetes, right? Like there's always going to be a need for, um, you know, controlling infrastructure outside of Kubernetes. Not just like bare metal deployments, but also things like switches and things like firewalls, um, you know, those those kinds of things. And Ansible is, uh, at least for Red Hat, is going to play a big role there. And I've been working with our uh, Ansible team to, okay, like how do we define GetOps in a non-cloud native way, yeah. right? Like how, do, how does that look like? And because there, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of gaps, right? There's like the immutability, the immutability aspect of Kubernetes that doesn't exist, right? In like right. on bare metal or like on like on a switch or, or on a network equipment or something like that. So, um, you know, I think evolving GitOps past cloud native, where it's all encompassing. I think for me, that's that's hopefully next year. <laughs> you sit me down here, I'll be talking about that because that that's that's something that I think GitOps needs to extend just beyond cloud native. That's awesome. I, I, th I think that's really what uh, I think the people at home are mm. going to hope and they're going to hold you to it. Yes, so, yes, yeah, yes, know, exactly. Let's, yeah. let's, let's oh, yeah, get there. I'm on camera saying yeah, it. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's on the internet, so yeah, it's forever so, now. So you know, it's forever. Immutable. Yes, um, exactly. So I, I want to thank you both uh, for coming mm. here. I want to thank Joe. I want to thank you for co-hosting. This has been fun. It's our first time together. Absolutely. You know, so it was uh, <laughs> a great. good time. Thank you. Thank really you so appreciate much. it. And I want to thank you all for uh, watching us again on 420 from Amsterdam. Really love it, and uh, I want you to have a great rest of your day wherever you are in the world. And thank you for watching The Cube, uh, where, uh, oh, why did I screw that up already? <laughs> but the leader in high-tech coverage. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you again.